I don't mean to go off on a rant here, Leo, but so go ahead. If you go back, just go ahead. Go back in time. Go back in time to 2002. <laughs> rant away. Microsoft has Windows XP. There's, it's a security disaster. Jim Alchin has had to come home from his vacation uh, to fix Windows XP, and Microsoft ends up doing this thing called trustworthy computing. Uh, they completely reset Windows Server 2003. It's a server, not a surfboard. They got rid of uh, the browser and all that kind of stuff by default. Uh, and on Windows XP, what they did was Service Pack 2, right? Uh, with advanced security was the official name. Uh, they turned the firewall on. Finally, you know, they secured Windows. And one of the little things they came out with at that time because of this security push was this thing called Security Center. And Security Center has kind of made its way forward in Windows. It's still in Windows 10 today. It has a different name because it's a control panel interface. Um, and let me just look it up because it's such a convoluted name. It's called the Security and Maintenance um, Control Panel. But before it became this, um, they changed the name at some point. I forget off the top of my head which version of Windows it was, but let's say probably Windows 8, but maybe Windows 7. They changed the name of Security Center to Action Center. But then in Windows 10, they were like, you know, the name Action Center is kind of cool. Let's use that as the name for the Notification Center. And then the thing that was Action Center that used to be Security Center, we're now going to call it Security and Maintenance Control Panel. <laughs> and so that's what we have today. So in the creator's update, I know, in the creator's update, uh, and we also have, sorry, a security program called Windows Defender, which is an antivirus, anti-malware uh, uh, solution, right? And there's some controversy around Windows Defender in the sense that um, starting, I think, with this version, or was it the previous version, you can have uh, two instances of an anti-malware package running at the same time, but one of them has to be Windows Defender. And the idea here is that you have this thing built into Windows, and if your other security solution either, you know, times out because you didn't pay the subscription fee or maybe something's wrong with it, Windows Defender can kind of kick in and it's always running there in the background and security vendors don't like that and, and whatever. But Defender is this thing. And by the way, Defender has its own history too. Lots of different names. Um, I didn't write about this, so I don't remember this off the top of my head. But you remember that it was a purchase. It was used in a one care product. It became Security Essentials at one point. It, it has its own terrible, terrible history, which let's just pretend that never happened. But here we are in Windows 10. So now they're bringing back this. Now they're bringing back this new thing, or bringing out this new thing called the Windows Defender Security Center. So it's like Security Center, like it used to be, <laughs> plus Windows Defender, all in like one thing. But it sits in Windows 10 next to, like at least five other things that are called Windows Defender. Um, I have a kind of a goofy screenshot in my article of like three of them running. Uh, at one time, but actually in addition to those things, there's an offline application, there's a, a command line version, <laughs> you know, like there's all this like Defender stuff. And um, I sort of drew the parallel uh, to like mobile systems, especially iOS, because this is where I really notice it. I find it very goofy in mobile operating systems that the settings are always in a consolidated settings app, not in the application itself. And a good example of this is if you use an iPhone or an iPad, and you bring up the videos app that Apple has, which actually they're now getting rid of, but let's not worry about that. Um, you have purchases that you made that are up in the cloud, and then you have purchases that are in the on the device itself. And if you want to toggle the view between all of your purchases and just the ones that are on the device, you can't do it from the app. You have to do it from settings. And that's kind of how Windows Defender works, because Windows Defender has settings in the app but they also have settings in settings. <laughs> and I, I don't, it, I, I find this to be very confusing. So Windows Defender Security Center is basically a front end to all of the security features on your PC, just like Security Center used to be way back in 2002, 2003, uh, including Windows Defender, which is still a separate application. <laughs> and you can still access all of these features through the security and maintenance control panel because that's like the legacy UI. Now, it is possible that they will get rid of or um, at least deprecate this control panel interface. They seem to be moving in that direction. So I, I just, I feel like we've done this thing like you're familiar with like um, uh, object oriented programming and you can like overload uh, objects and things. Uh, it's sort of like a name overloading. Like we have mm -hmm. security center used in multiple places. We have windows defender used in multiple places. And I, I think we're, this is like the problem with windows in a nutshell, isn't it? You know, that there are too many ways to do too many different things, you know? Yes. And, um, Amen on it's, that. But, it's, but <laughs> it's frankly, like, oh. that's been the trademark of Windows since day one. 
Yep. yep. Um, uh, you yep. know, in fact, that was kind of the Macintosh was the anti Windows saying, well, we're going to, and they've changed, of course, over time, but we're going to have only one way to do everything. Right. And Windows always had four or five ways to do this. Yeah. Thing. Down to the point, I, now I, I was know, starting we, in Windows 8, where you had two browsers, you had two, two yeah. control yeah. panels, two everything. There was, we, there, was a, there was a brief slice in time, and who knows, maybe this actually continues somewhere in the server, but um, in the server world, Microsoft at one point, and I, I, I'm not going to be able to get it exactly at the top of my head, I think they started with Exchange. I know they did this with SQL Server, but what they basically did at one point was say, we're going to stop doing this opposite of Unix. Like the way Microsoft had done things to that point is they would build a GUI that would be the central management interface for this server, whatever it might be. And then they would build these command line tools so that you could automate and do other things, you know, in a more efficient manage, manage um, um, sorry, um, more efficient way. But the, the command line tools were always like a subset of what was available in the GUI. And so starting with some version of some server, Exchange, SQL Server, whatever, they did it in the opposite direction. They, they built everything on top of PowerShell, and the GUI was just a front end to the PowerShell stuff, which to me is like the right way to do it. It's possible if they're not doing this anymore, if you know this has been kind of deprecated, it might be because of the move to the cloud, whatever. But it seems like Windows, Windows, you know, Windows and the client should kind of work the same way. Like if we're going to have management interfaces for everything for businesses or whatever. That should be the start. Mm -hmm. And then you build this GUI on top of that. And because it's all extensible and open, anyone could build a GUI to control any feature of Windows. Like if there's stuff missing from the stuff built in Windows, you should be able to build GUIs on top of that and, and sell it or give it away and whatever. And of course, you know, we have those utilities. But um, I don't think it's like that. I think it's more like there's like this lump of functionality and they just kind of toss it at the wall. And like you get all these different little ways to do things and it's like yeah. it just doesn't seem organized to me. I know. A lot of people think, you know, it's great to have choice because some people like to do something one way. Some people like to yeah. do it another. But the problem is when you try to show somebody how to do something and you show it to them and then they stumble onto another way to do it. They're like, wait, that's not how you showed me how to do it. And yeah. they get confused yeah. because they're like, wait, I didn't think that's how I was supposed to do that. I mean, this happens with me and my mom showing her things a lot. And um, yeah. It happens to me, myself, all the time. Like, I'll be like, oh, how did I get to there? And then I'm like, no, I'm doing it in a totally different way. And But I think I'm going to the same place. And I think I'm going to be able to do the same set of things, sure. maybe. So no, I, I, I would like to see less choice of how to do certain things. And yeah. this is an example, this whole Defender security thing. Because I, I, I know sometimes I've had to look at Defender and I'm like, where is that again? And then I'll be like, oh, it's here. And then another time I'll be like, no, it's here, <laughs> right? And I yeah, think it's too confusing. I, I do. Yeah, yeah. I really do. Me too. You know, and this, I mean, look, I'm, I'm having a little bit of fun with this one. Um, I just find yeah. it amusing. Yeah. You know, the, the way that they're bringing back names and reusing names and yeah. the fact that Defender appears in the UI like, you know, 13 different ways. But, yeah. but this is indicative of the problem at Microsoft, you know, in many ways with Windows, right? And like you said, Leo, it's, it has been like this forever. I mean, it's this is a long running thing, and you can. We talked about the Ray Ozzy era where they had, you know, at least four different sync client clients at one time. You know, that were all kind of competing with each yeah. other for one reason, which is so stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and there are other versions of that. Um, we see it Dot a little net. bit. Remember with when everything was named? And, everything was named .NET for a while, and yep, that was yep. confusing. <laughs> like yep. wait, is like it, what did that even mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 